Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having an awesome day. I wanna talk about depth passes today and a couple ways that you can set them up uh, so that they're a little bit easier to work with. So we have this alley scene from our city pack. Let's say that we want to add a depth pass so that we can do some compositing in After Effects, maybe add some depth of field or play with the lighting in After Effects. So the way that you set up a depth pass is we'll go to our camera and under the details, we have two different checkboxes here for depth of field. We'll have the front blur and the rear blur. And then if we go to our focus distance, we can set that up as well. And this is going to lay out our depth pass, but it's kind of hard to visualize exactly what's going on. So we'll go to our render settings and we'll make sure that we have multi-pass and depth pass on. And we're also gonna turn on RGBA so we can see the render. And I'm gonna do a test render really quick. All right, so there's our test render. And if we switch from image to single pass, we can look at the different passes. So here's our depth pass. You see that we have a nice little band right in the middle. And this would work great if we want this part to be in focus and the other parts not. But what if we want it to be a gentle gradient from the front to the back? Well, we'll have to go to our top view and look at our camera. And this is where it can get a little bit confusing. We do have all these different handles we can grab and play around with, but it's just a little bit confusing. It'd be nice if we had a visual way to see exactly uh, what we're doing. And I found this great uh, little preset, and this is by Mike Uden, and it's a really nice little preset so that you can visualize what your depth pass is gonna look like. So go ahead and download that guy right here. And it's actually just a scene file with a camera in it. So we're gonna copy this camera and we'll paste it into our scene. Now it's really easy to set up. All you have to do is click on it and go to this tab that says Z depth camera. It has a little slot for your camera. Just drag that guy in there. And it also came with this texture right here, um, which has a gradient in it. And this gradient is linked up with Espresso to match the settings of your camera. So all we have to do is go back into our settings and we have to add something called uh, the material override. So if we click on material override, it's gonna take this material and if we drag it into this custom material, it'll override all the materials in your scene with this gradient. And this is going to make it really easy to visualize what's going on. So we'll add a interactive render region. And if we'll let that render, you can see that we have the exact result of what our depth pass is gonna look like, which is awesome. Uh, just a quick note, I think material override is R17 and above, so just be aware of that. Um, so now what we can do is go back to our camera, and if we go to our details, right now we can start messing around with all these different parameters, and we'll get really quick feedback on what um, that's actually doing to our scene. So now we can see that we're getting that nice gradient from the beginning to the back. We can play around with the back gradient, maybe make that a lot larger. So you can see that we're able to really dial in what we're going for. And you know, if we do want that uh, beginning part to be white, we can sort of add that sliver in. We can play around with you know, how tight the band is so that we have a really sharp focus spot, depending on what you wanna do. So this is a great way to set up your scene. Uh, you can visually see it really quickly. And then all you have to do is when you're ready to render, all you have to do is uncheck that material override and then you will be back to rendering all of the materials that are in your scene. And there you go, now you're ready to render. So it's a really quick way to set up your scene and make sure that Z depth pass is exactly what you want in After Effects. So I hope that helps you guys out. Thanks as always for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time.